Okay, we are going to go ahead and start practicing balancing chemical equations. So I have my first equation here, which we have already identified as a synthesis reaction. And I'm going to try to balance out this equation. So I have uh, both nitrogen and hydrogen in this equation. Nitrogen, hydrogen, everything that appears on the left has to be on the right. So I only really need to check the left-hand side for who I should be writing down in my T-chart, um, rather than checking both sides. If I have someone over here that is not over here, uh, something else has gone horribly wrong. Now I can just go ahead and do my count. So on the left-hand side of my arrow, I have uh, two nitrogens. And on the right-hand side of my arrow, I only have one nitrogen. So I already know that I messed up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at hydrogen. I have two on the left and three on the right. So not only are my nitrogens out of balance, my hydrogens are also out of balance. So that means I am off kilter for multiple things. I'm going to go ahead and utilize something called Minho, okay? Min Ho. Min Ho is going to give me an order in which to attack this. This is going to be metals first, then polyatomic ions, non-metals, then hydrogen, then oxygen. So that means I'm going to try to fix nitrogen before I fix hydrogen. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see what I can multiply one by to get two. Oh, well, two. So I'll put that two coefficient there and then I will recount. This not only affected my nitrogen count, it also affected my hydrogen count. So two times three is gonna give me six. And now I can go ahead and try to fix my hydrogen on the left-hand side. Now two times something will give me six. Since these are both even numbers, I don't have to worry about it not being possible. So two times, oh, three. Two times three will give me six and that will give me my balanced equation with the correct counts and correct coefficients here. My next example is going to be sodium chloride plus diatomic fluorine going to sodium fluoride plus diatomic chlorine. And this one I'm going to have uh, three elements here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out all of my participants. So I have sodium, I have chlorine, and I have fluorine. And I'm just writing them as I see them on uh, the actual equation. So for sodium on my left hand side, I have one. And on my right hand side, I also only have one. So we're good with sodium. With chlorine on the left hand side, I have one. But on the right, I have two. Uh oh, we have our first problem child. And then finally, we have fluorine with two on the left and only one on the right. So I have both sodium and chlorine, or sorry, both fluorine and chlorine as my problem children here that I need to fix. Now, Minho uh, really gets me back to that uh, non metal as my first problem because my metal, my sodium is fine. I don't need to touch her. I don't need to touch him, so I need to fix my chlorine, my fluorine first. Which you pick first doesn't particularly matter as long as uh, you fix both of them at some point. So I have one on the left and two on the right, which means I need two on the left. And so I will go over and I will write that coefficient of two in front of the compound that contains chlorine. Remember, I cannot adjust chlorine's subscript count and I cannot insert a coefficient into the middle of a compound. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. So I have to put that coefficient in front of this, which messes up my sodium count. So now my sodium count is two, and Minho says I have to pay attention to sodium first before I go back to fluorine. But luckily for me, sodium and fluorine are together, and now both of them need to be multiplied by two in order to get my counts to be correct. So now I'm gonna go ahead and circle my final counts. These is uh, these are going to be my correct coefficients, making everything balanced. Next, I have uh, lead to hydroxide plus hydrogen chloride going to water and uh, lead to chloride. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna write out everybody here. So I will have lead. I will have oxygen. 
I will have hydrogen and I will have chlorine. Now, a thing that we could have possibly done, or it looks at least as though we might have been able to, is use the polyatomic version of uh, oxygen and hydrogen, that hydroxide, and count it as one single thing. That's what the I in Minho is for, is so that you can count polyatomic ions as one single thing. However, it's not readily viewable in the product side, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break it down into oxygen and hydrogen instead. What we do need to be careful about, though, is that hydrogen is in multiple places on the left-hand side now, so I can't just count over here, I have to include this one as well. But let's go ahead and start counting. So for lead, I am going to have one on the left and one on the right. For oxygen, I will have two, as that two will distribute inside of the parentheses. And on the right, I will have one. For hydrogen, on the left-hand side, I will have two plus one, which is three. And on the right, I will have two. And then finally I have chlorine. On the left hand side I have one chlorine and on the right hand side I have two chlorines. Okay, using Minho I would uh, attack my lead first. Lead is fine though so I'll leave it alone. Uh, I don't have any polyatomic ions that were readily uh, available to be utilized so I'm going to go ahead and move on to my non-metals which in this case will only be chlorine. So for chlorine, I have one on the left and two on the right, so I need to go ahead and multiply this bad boy by two, which would get me up to two chlorines there, and it will also affect my hydrogen count. I have now two hydrogens here, and don't forget about the hydrogen over here, so two plus two will give me four hydrogens on the left-hand side now. Uh, with Minho, I then attack hydrogen next. So now I have four on the left and two on the right, which means I need to make that two into a four. So two times what is four? Oh, well, two. So I'll go ahead and multiply two by two, which will give me four on the right-hand side for the number of hydrogens. This two will also affect my oxygen count. So now I will have two oxygens. And now everybody is happily the same on both sides. I am following the rules of the universe here. Uh, next reaction here, we have um, aluminum bromide plus potassium sulfate going to potassium bromide and aluminum sulfate. So I'll go ahead and I'll write out my elements. Now here is the first time that I really get to utilize the ion portion of Minho as I have SO4 readily viewable as having stayed intact on both the left and the right hand side of my uh, reaction. So aluminum, I have one aluminum on the left and two on the right. Bromine, I have three on the left and one on the right. Potassium, I have two on the left and one on the right. And sulfate, I have one on the left and three on the right. Careful when you're counting uh, polyatomic ions, remember that SO4, that four is a part of sulfate. It's why it's already up here. If it makes you uncomfortable to count sulfate as one single object, you can split it into sulfur and oxygen. Just know that your math and your numbers are going to get um, higher than mine will necessarily. Okay, so with Minho, I know I'm gonna attack my metal first. That means I could either deal with aluminum or potassium first. Does not particularly matter, but I'll go ahead and fix aluminum first since it's first in line. So I have one on the left-hand side, but I need two, so I'll go ahead and I'll multiply that by two, so that will get me two aluminums, and two times three for bromine. That means I now have six bromines. Okay, so let's see. Uh, for potassium, I have two on the left and one on the right, so I'll go ahead and I'll multiply this by two, and that will get me to two uh, potassiums on the right-hand side, but only two bromines. Hmm, this is going to be a problem. I can see that I'm going to have to mess something up somewhere down the road, but um, my metals are now happy, and so I can go ahead and move on to my ions. My ions, I have one sulfate on the left and three on the right, which means I need to multiply my left-hand side by three. 
and that will get me to my three sulfites that I wanted. And then three times two will get me six potassiums. I've messed up my balance. Now I have to fix potassium since sulfate is fine now. So potassium, I have six on the left and two on the right. So that means that that two is incorrect. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cross it out and I'm gonna figure out a different coefficient to use. Let's see, my initial count was one. So one times what is six? Oh, I know, uh, six. So I'm gonna use that six coefficient there. And that six will affect my bromine as well, bringing my bromine count on the right hand side to six, which will make everybody balanced and everybody happy. Okay, my next equation is going to be uh, a lovely combustion equation. Combustion equations are particularly difficult to balance, so please, just as I did last time, readjust, try again. It's like a pattern, or it's like a puzzle, I should say. Uh, you will eventually find the correct answer. Uh, combustions are just kind of notorious for making you go back, readjust, go back, readjust, go back, readjust, okay? So if you see Cho, as your listed uh, elements out for balancing a chemical equation, just kind of, you know, buckle in, get ready, and we're gonna go ahead and attempt this one. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with our count. So carbon, I have one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. Hydrogen, I have four hydrogens on the left and two on the right. Oxygen, on the left I have two, and on the right I have, remember careful, it's in multiple places, so I have two plus one, which will give me three. Now with Minho, it just uh, says metals and ions. Don't have any metals, don't have any ions. The only non-metal that is not hydrogen or oxygen that I have is carbon, and carbon is happy right now, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Now I'm going to deal with hydrogen before oxygen. So hydrogen, I have two on the right and four on the left, which means I need to get this two up to four. So we'll go ahead and multiply it by two, and that will get me to four hydrogens. This also affects my oxygen count. So two times one is two plus two, that gets me to four. And then now the only one that's messed up is oxygen. Oxygen I have two, I want four. Oxygen is by itself. So I can very easily go ahead and make that adjustment and get to the correct count. This was a very easy combustion problem to balance. Um, and it is unique in that way. Okay, next I have yet another combustion reaction here. I'm going to go ahead and write out my Cho and get ready for a ride. Hopefully it'll be as easy as it was last time, but I know that if it, even if it's not, I'm gonna keep going through. So on the left-hand side, I have three carbons and one carbon on the right. Hydrogen, I have eight versus two. Oxygen, I have two and three, okay? Minho means that I'm gonna deal with my carbon first. I have one on the right and I need three, so I'll go ahead and I'll multiply that by three. And that will also affect my oxygen count. So three times two, that's six plus one, is gonna give me seven on the right-hand side. I'm not gonna mess with um, oxygen yet. I need to fix my hydrogen first. So I have two on the right, I need eight. So two times four will give me eight and that will change my oxygen count. So four times one, that's four, plus six is 10. So now I just need to mess with my oxygen. My oxygen is currently at two, I want 10. Two times five is 10, so that would get me to balanced. And this one was also uh, an easy combustion problem to balance. Last problem I have is phosphorus plus oxygen giving me diphosphorus pentoxide. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write out my, uh, my elements there, my components. I have uh, phosphorus and oxygen. Left hand side for phosphorus I have one and on the right I have two. Oxygen I have two and on the right I have five, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start. Minho says I would deal with phosphorus before I dealt with oxygen, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this by two. That would get me to two. But then I have a problem here, because then I am left with only oxygen to deal with, and I have two on the left and five on the right, but that's an even odd mismatch. I cannot multiply two by any whole number 
to get five. So that means that I have to find the lowest common multiple between two and five and see if I can work it out that way. So lowest common multiple, remember you're going to go ahead and write out the multiples of um, a particular uh, number. Okay, and then you're gonna to try to find the lowest common match and that is going to be 10 for two and five, which means I need oxygen's count to be 10 on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn that left-hand side into 10 by multiplying it by a five coefficient. And then I will multiply my right-hand side by two to get me up to that 10, uh, to get me up to that 10 count. But that two messes up my phosphorus count. So now I have four phosphoruses, which means that this two coefficient is no longer sufficient and I have to adjust. I had one and now I need it to get to four, which means that I am going to replace it with a four coefficient, which will get me to balanced for both phosphorus and oxygen.